Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this special request RPG Maker MV tutorial, I'm going to help Miracle Dev with one of his uh, battle systems. So he's working on a pirate-like game, and he says, I was wondering if you could make a tutorial like using random chance. Uh, an example would be you're playing a pirate game and you press raid. Upon pressing raid, you have a 20% chance to fight uh, this battleship, 20% for the next one, 20% for that one, 10% for a, a battleship, 10% for another battleship, uh, adding up to a 100% chance to hit a ship. Um, this is just an example for a game I'm trying to make. I hope you can help me. All right, Miracle Dev. So I've got the part of the battle system that you're looking for uh, built in the game, in this test project. But uh, this isn't like a full, like, here's how you build your system because this is just the piece that you asked me for, okay? So, uh, we've got our uh, player and we've boarded a ship and when we walk on this tile right here, it's going to do uh, a player touch event. So, if we walk here, it's going to ask us if we want to engage the fleet. If we say no, then we just walk back. If we say yes, then we have the options to do whatever is in your battle system, right? You know ready arms or prepare for attack or whatever you want you said raid so if we say run it's just going to back out of the event but uh if we say yes then we're going to have uh the option to say raid Stop going holes in my ship! and it's going to roll a random number and pick between what ship to uh fire at now i would do this differently i would let the player select a target and then roll a random chance on how to hit that target but because this is a special request tutorial i'm making it the way that you uh need it to be so uh if we hit yes there's a loop at the end of this event so it's going to let us continue to fire uh, before the loop uh before the event ends you would give the enemies a chance to fire back probably um, but that wasn't in the request so we're presented with this loop here that we can continue to raid at any time we could say no and back off the fleet or we can go back in and just continue to raid you see right there it hit an empty spot because it rolled a number that was aiming uh at a different ship so i guess that's what you would consider a miss maybe that's how you're handling this but if you say yes you raid you'll keep attacking until eventually you get them all but you still have to get that five percent chance to hit the smallest ship so to get the, the, the rafts in the top left and the to, uh, up here, uh, there's only a 5% chance that you're going to hit these. So there's a good chance that these are going to last around, uh, uh, last for quite a while before you actually land a hit on them. The battleships, I uh, gave them the 20% chance of the biggest target, so they seem like the easiest to hit. The boats, I gave them the 10% chance, since they're a little bit bigger than a raft, but smaller than a ship. And uh, the little rafts that are farther in the back, they're kind of a harder target, so I gave them the 5% chance. So that's how you'd go about making the system. So it's uh, every time we go, we have about a uh, 1 in a 20% chance to hit this ship. So we could be here a long time hitting the last ship. That's why I would change the targeting to let the player pick and then roll a number based on the ship size or the accuracy of your cannons or some other variables. But let's look at the script now, and I'll show you what I've done. So to start off, uh, we've made, uh, I've got several uh, switches, one switch for each of these events here. So uh, let's look at these events real quick. So since we're throwing an animation at a target, it would be a good idea to uh, name your events. So when you're doing a move event, a movement route, or you're playing an animation, you know what event to target. Instead of memorizing ID is 36, is the fourth boat, it's gonna get real confusing. Just name your boats when you have a battle like this. Uh, really simple for all of these boats. They have no contents. They don't need uh, any trigger. Basically set the trigger to action button, priority, same as character. Um, you could go below character if you want the player to be able to move across them, or you could set them same and select through. So I've set them to walking, stepping, direction fix. Uh, that way they animate and uh, you, when you try to ta uh, target them on your ship, it doesn't move the ship to face your ship every time. Uh, on the second page, we've got uh, a condition here. So we've uh, set up a switch um, for each boat. You can see I've named it Raid Boat 4 to correlate with the name right here. So the second thing is just removing the image and... Uh, uh, basically, that's it. You same priority, same trigger. You've selected the condition of uh, this 
page to be turned on when Raid Boat 4 switch is turned on, and they're all the same like this. So all of these boats are just two page events, one with the image, one without the image, and the second page is the trigger for the boat. This is either madness or brilliance. It's remarkable how often those two threats coincide. Everything is handled uh, inside this trigger event. So when you walk up to this trigger event, it's player touch below characters, so it's going to automatically start uh, right uh, when you enter this battlefield, right? So at the beginning, we have a loop, so that's just so that you can continue to fire. So it, to do a loop, you just go create new, page one at the bottom, you see flow control, and you have a loop. So what you're going to do is start a loop at the top, and inside the loop, you're going to create a show text, uh, let the player, or ask the player something, do they want to start the fight, uh, then show choices, yes or no. Uh, cancel choice uh, will always be on the no, of course. I'm pretty sure you know that. Uh, when they say yes, you're going to say, what would you like to do? Present the player with the options. So then you can have all of your options in these show choices. When uh, they select the raid uh, event, um, then you're going to control a variable. So we're insert new control variables. We'll create a new variable. I've called it random raid. You can call it whatever you want. The name doesn't matter at all. But we're going to set this, the operation of set, to a random value between 1 and 100. <clears throat> now the reason why, why we want to do 1 to 100 because it helps count percentages easier. Now I could do 1 to 1000 and multiply that number by 10, um, but I couldn't really do 1 to 10 and have a 5% chance. Because if we're doing 1 to 10, then the lowest percent chance is going to be 10% and you ask for the ability to have a 5% chance. So set it to a random number between 1 and 100. And then what we're going to do is nest some conditional statements. So we're going to right click, insert new conditional branch. We're going to select that variable we, cre we, we created and we're going to say greater than or equal to 81 and we're going to select a create an else branch. So if it rolls an 81 all the way up to 100, that's going to give you a total of 20 possible outcomes. So 20 divided by 100, you're going to have a uh, 20% chance basically. So if uh, we get the highest number, it's going to hit the, the target of boat one. And in parentheses, when I named the boats, I also named the percent chance that I wanted to have. Uh, just as just to help me stay organized and how much I'm subtracting from the, the number from the, to the next uh, random chance. So inside of this else handler is where we start the next nested conditional. But let's look at what else is happening when we say raid. It rolls a random number. It checks to see if that number is above 81 or uh, equal to or above 81. If it is, it's going to show an animation on the first boat and it's going to play the, the fire effect so it looks like a cannonball or something. Then we're going to control a switch. So we're going to control the, the switch that makes the boat one invisible. to set. So by controlling switch, uh, bo raid boat one, uh, I think it's right here. It's actually turning on this switch. So when it shows the animation, it switches to, to page two, and basically that's to signal that you're syncing that ship. And that's all that's happening. Uh, inside the else handler, we're gonna start another uh, conditional statement, conditional branch. So inside of the else of the first one, we're gonna say if it wasn't 81 to 100, then if it was 61 to 80, then we're going to show animation on uh, boat number two. And then we're going to control switch for raid boat number two. Inside the else handler for that, we're going to say if it's 41 to 60, do that for boat three, which is also 20% chance. So those are the three 20% chance. Inside the else handler for this one, we're going to say if random raid is greater than or equal to 31 instead of 41 now, instead of going straight to 21, because now these boats, boat four through uh, six, are all going to have 10% chance. So that's going to give 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then the last two, 95 and 100%, uh, making it so that we have our math in order there. So this boat is going to, uh, this uh, conditional branch is going to state if random rate is greater than 31 or equal to 31, show animation on boat number four, and turn on the switch that's going to make boat four invisible. And you're going to do the same thing for all the other ones. So the next one will be another 10% chance if random rate uh, inside the else handler. If random rate is greater than or equal to 21, then show uh, animation on boat five, 
control the switch to make boat 5 invisible. And then on the else handler, same thing for boat 6. If random rate is greater than or equal to 11, then we're going to show animation on boat 6. Control the switch, that makes boat 6 invisible. Inside the else handler for that, we're going to say if random rate is greater than or equal to 6. So now if it's... Uh, if it's one to five, then uh, or if it's greater than uh, or equal to six, then it's going to show this one. If a random rate is greater than or equal to one, so if it's not a, uh, if it's not past six, then it's not going to do this. But it'll then check here if it's greater than or equal to one, and obviously it has to be because uh, actually this doesn't need an else handler since this is our our last part. So if it's if it's not greater than 6, then it's got to be greater than 1 because it can only be 1 to 100, and we've eliminated all the other choices that it could possibly be. So at the very last one, you don't need the else handler, but it's going to say show animation on boat 8, control the switch to make boat 8 invisible, and that's it. Underneath that, when you, the player says they want to run, then just make them move back the way they came from, um, or you could eliminate that. You could just have it uh, blink. Uh, then we're going to break loop. So if they say we want to run, we have to break the loop. Otherwise, it's going to go back to the top and they're ne never going to be able to get out of that. So how you break the loop is right underneath loop in the event commands. We'll go to flow control page one and you break loop. You're going to do the same thing for when they say no on the second thing. Uh, so this is when you have the options of rating and running, but this is the first option, <clears throat> engage the fleet, yes or no. If they say no, do the same thing, move the player the way they came from, and break the loop. At the end of it, you'll have the, the beginning or the, uh, the part where it, the loop starts over again, so we're going to repeat above. That uh, should already be there if you created the loop at the beginning. So when you create a loop, it'll say loop. You'll have some space in between. It'll say repeat above. And you put all of this in between the loop with the break loop option on run and raid. And this is just a piece of the, the puzzle for your battle system that you've been working on. Hopefully this helps you, Miracle Dev. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, like, favor, share, subscribe, all that. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to get more involved with the indie dev game community, I have forums on driftwoodgaming.com that you can join. You can create your own groups. If you're looking for a specific person with a specific kind of talent, you can go there and say, hey, I'm looking for this type of person. I need, I need somebody to make the music for my game. We're already going to put it on Steam, but we need to do these final things, ta-da-da-da. Whatever you have, or, or maybe you just want to start a new project, check it out, Driftwood gaming.com if you want to get more involved with the indie dev game community thank you guys so much for watching once again we'll see you in the next tutorial and then they made me their chief